Welcome to our Chinese Finance and Economy Briefing Program. Today, we dive into the evolving landscape of China's foreign policy as Premier Li Chang embarks on a tour of the Middle East, showcasing China's growing influence and the risks that come with it. This shift aims to challenge U.S. dominance in the region, but could potentially strain relationships with other key players. Next up, Alibaba Cloud is gearing up for its annual ASPR conference in Hangzhou, where the spotlight will be on artificial intelligence and large language models. CEO Eddie Wu Yongming will inspire the tech community with a keynote speech, while various forums will explore the future of AI and its applications, setting the stage for groundbreaking discussions in the tech world. Lastly, we discuss China's decision to gradually raise the retirement age, a significant reform that aligns its retirement policies more closely with those of developed nations. This change, effective January 1, 2025, will impact millions and reflects China's response to demographic shifts and economic pressures. Please stay tuned for more detailed insights. South China Morning Post reports on China's increasing influence in the Middle East, highlighting Premier Li Chang's recent visit to Saudi Arabia and the UAE. This trip marks a significant shift in China's foreign policy, transitioning from a primarily trade-focused approach to one that seeks to actively engage in regional security dynamics. As China aims to bolster its ties with Gulf Cooperation Council nations, it also positions itself as a mediator in conflicts, potentially challenging U.S. dominance in the region. However, this strategy comes with risks, as it may alienate traditional allies like Israel and create tensions with Iran. China's evolving stance reflects its broader geopolitical ambitions, but navigating the complexities of Middle Eastern politics will require careful balancing. South China Morning Post also covers Alibaba Cloud's upcoming ASPR conference, where the focus will be on artificial intelligence and the future of artificial general intelligence, AGI. With over 400 sessions planned, the event aims to unite the AI community in China, showcasing the progress of Alibaba's Tongyi Qianwen language models. As the competition intensifies among Chinese tech firms to develop advanced AI solutions, the conference will feature discussions on generative AI applications, including autonomous driving. Despite facing new restrictions on chip access from the US, Alibaba and other Chinese companies are determined to innovate and position themselves as leaders in the AI landscape, marking a crucial moment in the nation's technological ambitions. South China Morning Post reports on China's decision to raise its retirement age, a significant policy change that aims to align the country more closely with global standards. Beginning in 2025, the retirement age for men will increase from 60 to 63, while women will see their retirement age rise from 55 to 58. This gradual adjustment over the next 15 years reflects a broader trend seen in other developed nations, where retirement ages are also being pushed higher. For instance, countries like France and Japan have implemented similar changes to address demographic challenges and ensure the sustainability of pension systems. As China navigates this transition, it will need to balance the needs of its aging population with economic pressures, highlighting the complexities of modern labor policies in a rapidly changing world. South China Morning Post highlights China's evolving economic strategy as the country shifts from its zero-COVID policy. Recognizing the dual threats of supply shocks and dwindling aggregate demand, the Chinese government is pivoting its macroeconomic approach from a supply-side focus to one that prioritizes boosting domestic demand. This transition is underscored by a commitment to structural transformation, particularly in the real estate sector, which has faced significant financial and environmental scrutiny. Policymakers are now channeling resources into more productive sectors like emerging technologies while cautiously managing the real estate market to prevent it from spiraling into a broader crisis. The long-term goal is to create a resilient housing market that can adapt to the new growth phase of the economy, reflecting a decade of structural changes aimed at achieving higher quality growth. In another report, South China Morning Post discusses the rising influence of Chinese electric vehicles, EVs, in Europe, particularly in Spain, where they have gained traction by undercutting competitors on price. However, this expansion faces potential hurdles, such as tariffs and trade scrutiny from the European Union. Germany is actively lobbying EU members to oppose these tariffs, highlighting the geopolitical tensions surrounding the EV market. Meanwhile, the US is taking measures to restrict tax credits for EVs that utilize Chinese battery technology, which could disrupt collaborations between American automakers and Chinese firms. Despite these challenges, the adoption of EVs continues to grow in China, with domestic sales outpacing traditional vehicles, indicating a significant shift in consumer preferences toward sustainable transportation. 
The South China Morning Post also reports on a surge in domestic tourism as more Chinese travelers opt for self-driving trips. With improved rural infrastructure and a desire for personalized travel experiences, car rental bookings have skyrocketed, especially in less accessible tourist destinations. Young travelers, particularly those born in the 1980s and 1990s, are leading this trend, favoring the flexibility of car rentals over traditional modes of transport. The rise in self-driving tourism is further supported by a growing network of well-maintained highways, making it easier for tourists to explore remote areas. As travelers embrace the freedom of the open road, the car rental market is witnessing significant growth, reflecting a broader shift in travel habits across the country. South China Morning Post reports that Chinese stocks are languishing near a five-year low as trading resumes following a holiday break. Investors are cautious ahead of the Federal Reserve's rate decision, with the CSI 300 index showing a slight uptick of 0.2%, while the Shanghai Composite Index dipped by 0.1%. Economic data from August revealed disappointing industrial output and retail sales, coupled with a deeper decline in home prices. Analysts suggest that a potential rate cut by the Fed could provide a temporary boost to Chinese stocks, but concerns remain about the long-term fundamentals of the Chinese economy. In the meantime, energy producers showed gains, while consumer staples faced declines due to weak spending, highlighting the mixed performance across various sectors. In another article from South China Morning Post, the geopolitical landscape is shifting as China edges closer to Russia amid the ongoing Ukraine conflict. The US and its allies are considering providing Ukraine with long-range missiles, which could dramatically change the war's dynamics. As tensions rise, China has increased its diplomatic support for Russia, with high-level meetings between leaders from both nations. However, underlying territorial disputes and public sentiments in Russia regarding China's intentions have created friction. The Chinese ambassador's dismissal of rumors about territorial ambitions reflects the delicate balance Beijing must maintain to avoid alienating Moscow while managing its own regional interests. The situation raises questions about China's ability to navigate its role as a potential peace broker while dealing with criticisms from Ukraine regarding its neutrality. Lastly, South China Morning Post highlights that Apple's new iPhone 16 series is already being sold at discounts in China, indicating lukewarm demand ahead of its official release. Retailers like Pinduoduo and Alibaba are offering significant price cuts, with the iPhone 16 Plus available at a 10% discount. The absence of anticipated AI features at launch has dampened consumer enthusiasm, as many are waiting for the integration of these capabilities. The competitive landscape in China is further complicated by Huawei's resurgence in the 5G smartphone market, which poses a threat to Apple's market share. Despite the challenges, Apple appears to be adapting its strategies, such as lowering trade-in values, as it seeks to maintain its foothold in the increasingly competitive Chinese smartphone market. South China Morning Post reports that a coalition of four southern provinces in China is collaborating with Thai authorities to develop smart cities, leveraging Chinese technology to enhance the digital economy in the ASEAN region. Supakorn Sidhichai, executive vice president of Thailand's Digital Economy Promotion Agency, emphasized the importance of creating a digital technologies ecosystem while acknowledging the challenges posed by data flow. As part of the Belt and Road Initiative, they aim to improve both physical and digital infrastructure including building submarine cables and laser centers to support business transformation. Collaborations with tech giants like Huawei, Alibaba, and Tencent underline China's commitment to advancing smart city initiatives and cross-border e-commerce. However, Supacorn highlighted that data security remains a significant concern, as recent regulations require thorough security reviews when transmitting personal information abroad. This challenge is echoed in the context of the Digital Economy Partnership Agreement, DEPA, which aims to streamline digital trade among member countries, with China expressing interest in joining the pact. Despite Thailand's current non-membership, Supacorn remains optimistic about future cooperation and the potential for enhanced digital infrastructure to facilitate cross-border trade. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, 
the 6do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6do Brief via email.